I often get asked what is bearding. It's honeybee jargon for when it gets too hot in a hive, the bees just hang out in the front and make like a beard. What they're doing here is they're flapping their wings and cooling off the inside of the hive. Believe it or not, there's bees right at the entrance holding on and all throughout the inside making a large pipeline of bees that create a current. They're regulating the temperature of the hive. It's called thermoregulation. They want the cluster in the middle to be around 93 degrees so they can incubate their babies. That's what you see here. It's starting to get hot outside, but it's still important to do colony inspections, so let's take a look. Okay, let's take a look at some brood patterns. Here we are. Uh, this is no longer spring buildup. This, these are queen, queens in full swing. Uh, this is from one colony, and this is what you want to see. You see a band of honey and, and bee bread pollen, and then a, a pretty solid pattern. Another frame. Properly. Okay, and this is from the same colony. As you can see, they're uh, properly, properly nourished and uh, looking pretty healthy. Now we're looking at a different colony. Uh, once again, you see a pretty strong pattern here. And then when I say pattern, we're looking at the way things are capped. So these are all baby bees. This is where, if you're gonna have any indication of uh, the healthier hive, you're gonna look towards where life is being brought back into it. And that's right at the brood where the baby bees are. So we're, we're taking a look here. Um, and this looks pretty good, okay still good this colony this colony is looking good here okay and what you see here this isn't exactly a shotgun pattern it you see all these these holes and misses this is a queen that was just made so she's started laying again and picking up that's what it looks like okay this can be a sign of a failing queen in some circumstances you you got to know the full uh, story behind a hive to get an accurate picture of what's going on now i'm going to talk to you about varroa sensitive hygiene this originally was something that was developed by the u.s department of agriculture uh, they were trying to increase this trait which is found naturally in bees especially bees that are african derived but they wanted to find a way to increase this in European honeybees. Now, if you look at this cell that I'm zooming in on, you'll see what it looks like. The mite is unfortunately not native to where European bees are, so they don't know how to deal with them. As you see on this frame of European bees, the brood looks okay, 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 and then you get over to this side, and now you start to see some problems. Well, these bees have the trait of varroa specific or varroa sensitive hygiene you can see they're uncapping these baby bees now those caps are actually permeable or semi permeable where the babies the larvae can breathe in and out uh, and what they say is that these bees are able to smell any problems inside of the cell and if there is a problem they'll chew out the larvae and eject it uh, before it has a chance to basically multiply uh, the the problem. See, mites only breed underneath the capping, so a founder's mite will ride along the bottom of a bee. You won't even see it, and then the day before a bees go to cap uh, their larvae. Uh, the mite will drop in there and she'll actually lay an egg and the first egg will turn into a male. She'll mate with that male 
and then continue to lay eggs. Now, whenever there is a mite in a cell and it's opened up like this, for some reason it disrupts the reproductive biology of, of the mite and it makes her young less viable. Uh, anything that disrupts the reproduction of mites, be it, um, you know, taking for them to take longer to have babies or whatever by brood breaks it upsets the amount of mites they're able to produce and you can see here I exhumed one of the uh, uncapped larvae and or pupae and this is what was in it this is a mite this is a founder's mite a female and sure enough these these bees are on it now these hygienic bees my bees have the aloe grooming and the hyg hygiene all kinds of traits and even with all that these bees will not last forever on their own there's just too many factors with mites other bees feral colonies collapsing you know mites are all in the environment just like fleas on dogs if you're if your dogs are are good at like removing fleas from themselves well bring another dog in that has a lot of fleas and and let's see how well your dog eventually your dog will will just have a flea infestation if there's constantly other dogs that have fleas and that's just the way it goes uh, you have to manage your bees in some way to stay ahead of mites because you know if you have bees you have mites it's that simple if you're gonna get into beekeeping you if there's one thing that you need to know um, that that is going to follow you throughout all of your beekeeping is that when you keep bees you keep mites too and you need to figure out a way how to deal with them okay and um, so obviously this issue will be addressed um, there is an acceptable threshold for having mites in a colony I don't like to see them at all I don't like to see bees have to struggle and I I have methods of um, organic methods and integrated forms of pest management that help these bees along again like I said this colony and I've done it you know I've let bees go uh, and it is painful to watch them suffer because anybody who says they're treatment free and has gone treatment free for a long time look at their colonies have them say you know have them welcome you in to their yards and go through frames and look at just how mauled up the brood patterns are just how sick the bees are you know and how they're just getting by because those colonies are loaded with mites it doesn't mean they're free of mites it just means that somehow they're outrunning those mites and they're 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 just loaded with them see this colony right now is uh, this same colony it's it's got a high population it seems to be just fine but that that all comes to a crashing halt over time unfortunately varroa mites are like a super parasite I mean, they vector over 20 different life-threatening viruses to bees. And then, you know, if your bees have them, they interact with other bees in the environment, and then they get them. Varroa mites first arrived in the United States in 1987, and then in 1999, the USDA started that program of, of breeding varroa-sensitive hygienic bees. Uh, they called them something different, they had a different acronym, and then they even imported bees from a region in Russia that had European honeybees that were around varroa mites longer hoping to come up with a resistant bee and here we are 20 years later and the problem of varroa mites it still exists and I guess that is the reason why beekeepers exist you know because we're here to kind of help the bees out through this whole process together uh, I think one day we'll come up with a solution but for now you know, we are the solution.